in part by General Motors and all its divisions. You're watching Championship Bowling on CBC Television. This is our five-pin series, and we are in Barrie, Ontario. We're getting set for our second match of our second show, and it's Larry Richard of Kamloops, and he'll be in the red against Dale Alamo from Pinocchio, Alberta, just outside of Edmonton. He'll be wearing the blue, but it's Larry Richard from B.C. who leads things off. Richard, 54 years of age, comes in as the eighth seed, and when he's not bowling, he's the purchasing manager for Pollard Banknote Limited in Kamloops. Three step back up. A little nerves, maybe. Got that ball out on the lane, crossed the center arrow, but uh, right dead on the head pin. And for a man who deals in money, that was not a money shot. Likes to go right side with his second ball. Takes out three twos. Got the same combination remaining on the left side. Smooth right-hander, three-step approach. Little bit of a backup. He's not getting much movement on it right now. 28-year career. Been involved in uh, Masters and National Classified Canadian Championships. Uh, no stranger to the pressure. And maybe... Early pressure showing on Larry as he takes his seat. And that will bring up Dale Lillamo. 52 year old, number nine seed, sheet metal technician at Pinocchio Sheet Metal. Four Hit step pin. hook. Again, right on the nose, little smile. So far, even Steven. No question, I mean, he drove that head pin right straight back. TV nerves. That was pretty wide. Looking to make sure you pick up wood. Your opponent punched a head pin and only counted 12. Even though you punch, pick up all your wood, you get a three pin advantage with an open frame. Still has eight on the table and still has eight on the table. That is not a good beginning for Dale. That ball never moved at all. That was a better looking strike ball than it was an attempt at that right side 3-2. Only counted seven in the first frame. Head pin started his troubles. Little Let's reminder there. Come on. Much better. That was a really nice shot he just made. He's moved over that time, left-hand side of the lane. He's throwing the hook just about straight over the center arrow. The ball's going to break right to left into the right-hand pocket. Larry Rushett. Ah, uh, good movement on that one. Left-hand pocket. Flush just drove everything straight back. No question. Bowling ball right through the middle of the pin deck. Three pins doing the job they're supposed to. So we'll put the first frame for both bowlers down to TV nerves. Both have responded with strikes. Rashid trying for the double. Um, and he's got a head pin. His second. And two in a row on lane nine. We noticed in our ten pin series that there appeared to be a difference between the pair. And I say even though they're synthetic lanes and they're oiled the same, there's always a bit of a difference. I'm getting the same sense out of this five pin pair as well, Steve. The nine just reacts a little bit differently than lane 10. He's still got a couple of threes on board on the corner pin on the right side. Talk about the count. That's where it hurts missing and leaving that three pin standing on the first ball because he was counting back on a strike. So you lose the pinfall twice, really. 
So Larry Rochette of Kamloops sits down with a 43 count through three frames. Two very costly hit pins. Lillamo now will go to work. Trying to double. First ball, third frame. I got that one out wide, never came back. A little adjustment after that first frame head pin. See that ball, it's trying to turn over, but it really never makes a move. Difference between five pin and 10 pin, the, the amount of bowling ball on the lane itself is so minor that you don't get much movement on the ball as compared to a 10 pin bowling ball that's substantially larger. Nice recovery for Dale. Lelamo as he puts up his first spare, but look at the head pins for Richard. Save on all discontinued and clearance home electronics and appliances during the colossal electronic and appliance blowout this final weekend at the Brick. Plus, you don't pay for 15 months with no payments and no interest. The Brick, open Saturday till midnight. <coughs> oh. It's cold. Yeah, I know what you mean. No, you don't. You don't have a cold. Oh, yes, I do. You're not sneezing or anything. Well, I was yesterday, but I took Contact. Contact helps you breathe easier because it helps relieve sneezes due to nasal congestion for up to 12 hours, so you can get on with your day. <laughs> oh, it's cold. I know what you mean. Ugh, no, you don't. Oh, yes, I do. Ugh. Contact helps you get on with your day. Where will you be when you get the call? I won. I won! Yeah, I won! The Heart and Stroke Lottery is over 50% sold. Hurry, it's your chance to win. Three grand prizes of one million dollars. Millions in cash and cars. Great one in 15 odds. And you'll support Heart and Stroke Foundation research. Tickets are over 50% sold. Call now. We won. <laughs> in my world, I can go anywhere. All flights leave in the afternoon. All hotels are on the beach. All rental cars are SUVs. No convertibles. In my world, I am a goddess. Planning a trip with Expedia.ca is the difference between getting a trip and getting your trip. Expedia.ca. Flights, hotels, car rentals, packages. Now we're getting somewhere. Introducing same-day delivery at The Brick. Now in Toronto, when you buy it today, you can get it today. Now save on all discontinued and clearance home electronics and appliances during the colossal electronic and appliance blowout. Happening now at The Brick. And for G8, we've got... Naomi Klein and Jim 101. Naomi, that's an Inuit name, right? A Jewish name. What am I thinking? Perhaps you're thinking Nanaimo. 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 Right, right. Nanaimo bar. I had a brain thing there. Can we continue, please? Dale Lillamo in our second match. Show number two of five in our CBC Championship Five Pins Series. We're in Barry, And in this match, we've got Dale Lillamo of Panoka, Alberta, against Larry Richard from Kamloops, a Western showdown. The winner going on to face Daryl Rollins in the quarterfinals. Uh, tough break there. Boy, everything's sliding on uh, Dale Lillamo. He's missed, and he's missed, he's missed right. Dale's wife Rhonda looking on, a little bit of concern on her face. She's seen Dale bowl extremely well. Shot a 400 in the uh, Alberta Provincials uh, to win that Alberta Southern Championship. I would say a lot of concern on her face at this particular point in time for Dale. As Larry Rishit starts his approach looking for a triple. First ball in the six. And that won't do it. 
Now set that down way left of the target. And again, we talked about these lanes being fast. They're not going to get a lot of break on it. So you can't afford to miss by any distance at all as the ball's not backing up or hooking very much. Pin cam view of this spare attempt. On the inside, well done. So a couple of head pins, three strikes and one spare for the leader in this match, Larry Rushett, as he moves over to lane number nine, left lane, here at Bolarama Bayfield in Barry. Larry taking a little bit of time here on the approach. Trying to make sure things are right. Lane nine has been a little bit of a nemesis. Two head pins out of three shots on this lane. Now, missed the target to the right that time and the ball stayed right all the way. See that ball cross over. It was just inside the center arrow. With a backup, it's gonna, if anything, it's gonna go that much further right as well. A little bit of uh, dance there at the foul line. That's the first we've seen of anybody sticking or slipping on these approaches. They've been pretty good, pretty consistent. A 15 count for Urshik. In the seventh frame, and he goes to 143. Bowlers are playing a little bit of uh, Alphonse and Gaston. Neither one of them seems to want to take the lead and hold on to it. Get on a bit of a roll and then leave an open frame. 50% of first shots are misses for Dale and Larry. Not a good stat. There we go. Much better shot. That'll improve the stats. Well, it, it gives you a little bit more confidence. You make a good shot like that and you get rewarded with a strike. He threw that one exactly where he wanted. Lelamo coming up with a timely strike. Lelamo trying to make it two in a row. And the head pin again. His second head pin of this match against Richard. Well, he made a good adjustment in his feet position on lane 10 and he got the strike in the left-hand pocket. That one, he was aiming at left-hand pocket. It just a little bit thick. Drove it straight back. Again, working on a strike and you leave up three pins, it really costs you six in total. And in a tight match like that, uh, pins you leave on the pin deck may be almost as important as the number of strikes you get. So Lelamo leaves the three pin on the left side and sits down with a 139 total through eight frames. Rashid goes to work sitting at 143 with his first ball in the eighth. Rashid has a potential of 278. Lelamo 229. Wow. Get going. Opponent gives you one, and you just, they, they, neither one of them seem to take advantage of an opponent's mistake or tough break. There, Larry Rishit with a, a chance to take a big lead in the match. Punches a head pin. We're going to have one of those games where it comes down to the last ball in the 10th frame to figure out who wins this. Good television, but hard on the nerves for the bowlers. Especially this early in our competition. Another five pins left on the pin deck, Steve. And as you mentioned, leaving those pins up can be costly. Both head pin problems in the eighth. Larry Rishit from Kamloops, B.C. Coming off a head pin in the eighth. First ball in the ninth frame, and he's got the strike. And that arrow. is strike number four. Good lift on the ball that time. Good pin reaction as well. Watch that ball. It looks like it's thick on the middle, but because of that rotation on the ball, left to right movement, breaks up potential head pin and uh, split as well. Gets a strike. 
Huge shot in the ninth frame for Larry Richard. The gauntlet has been thrown. Now, Lelamo has got to respond. Ah, uh, good looking shot. Right hand pocket, thick, the rotation covering up the corner pins. Four step, pretty smooth, long slide. He lets the ball go fairly low, right down by the foul line. But good extension, good follow through. Trying for the double. Two pin finally goes down. A bit of a dance. Finally fell over. Well, a little bit of break in, in that you take away the danger of chopping the three pin out of there. Uh, it doesn't help on the count. But obviously it did not go down early enough. Still standing, so you get three, two left. And he gets it anyway, so. But you're right about that chop. It does uh, set up the scenario for that. Dale Illimo, last ball, 10th frame. Needs a strike to finish with 199. And does not get that strike. That was a good looking shot though, 28. So Larry Richard needs to count 30 to move on to the next round. Lillamo is done at 197. <laughs> Looking like aces, <laughs> leaves himself the corner pin. He's got to have the spare though. He, got, he gets the break here on uh, the string pull on the right hand corner, but he must have the spare to win this match. There it is. Now all he's got to do is stay behind the foul line. Nice way to finish. Larry Richard of Kamloops, B.C. moves on to the quarterfinals to face our defending champion, Darrell Rollins, up riding Ontario. This one was not a model of consistency, but Richard finished strike, spare, strike, and that was the difference over the man from Ponoka. The number eight seed eliminates number nine. Richard moves on to the next round in our CBC five-pin championship series.